The center's all done. Okay, it really isn't. We're faking it, but the camera person has a hot date tonight. So pretend the center's all done, and now I want to show you how to do the borders. So the first border part, uh, the top part, is 40 and a half inches. So you need to cut these strips that you cut with the fabric down to 40 and a half inches. But how, my mat is only 24 inches, so how do you cut 40 and a half inches? It's easy peasy. You take the fold, you put the fold on the zero line here, and you take your trusty handy dandy dollar store calculator, and you take 40.5 divided by 2, and that comes out to 20 and a quarter. So now we straighten it up along a line, make sure, double check, measure twice, cut three times, and then go get more fabric. But when you work for the fabric company, they send you extra. Thank goodness. So anyway, I'm on zero here, double checking 20, 20, 20 and a quarter. So there's my 20 and a quarter line and zip. This is now 40 and a half, which is what the directions say you're supposed to have. Then the other part is 48 and a half. So you need to sew three strips together to get two that are 48 and a half. And the way they want you to sew the strips together is on the diagonal. Sometimes you sew border strips on the diagonal, sometimes you sew them together end to end. And so to sew them on the diagonal, you just put right sides together and you sew from here to here, which I'm going to do real quick. And I just eyeball it. This is the same way you sew a binding, so if you sew a binding, you can sew a border. And zip across. And it was close enough, if it's not perfectly straight, no one's going to know, except you and your kids, who are going to look and laugh at you. And then I just take a pair of scissors and cut it off so it has a quarter inch seam allowance left. And then you can just kind of finger press those open. Or you can actually get up to an iron and press it, but for right now I'm just going to finger press it. So now I need a piece that is 48 and a half inches. So I start by laying it all out and having it not fall on the floor. And I go to my zero line and I lay it across, straight across, and I've got it hanging over my zero line because I want to cut off that salvage edge. And so now I have an edge perfectly at zero. And now, I'm going to put my ruler there so things don't move. And I'm going to take a pin and put a pin down here at 24 inches. So from here to the pin is 24 inches exactly, except I stretched it. So don't stretch your fabric. So let it sit. And so from here to here is 24 inches. And now move the fabric down. And again, unless you can do this in your head, Get your trusty calculator and take 48 and a half minus 24 inches. This next piece needs to be 24 and a half inches. So now you put the pin right at zero. And, oh, that'll hold it. And measure down 24 and a half inches. Oh, which is 24 and right to the edge of the board. Oops, they're kind of my table. Ooh, I just ruined mom's good table. Don't tell anybody. So anyway, now I have the required 48 and a half. Oh, and I always forget to take this pin out and find it when I'm sewing. So I'll cut a couple more of these. And you do the same thing with a wide border. They give you the directions of, of the lengths you need. And I'll sew the borders on. And I'll come back and show you the quilt all finished. And it's done. Isn't it beautiful? For that horse lover in your life, it's all put together. And I found some things out while I was really putting it together that I want to point out. First of all, the seams as I was putting together the rows, the blocks into the rows, I ironed the seams in towards the boot block, which was the way they wanted to go because of that seam there. So if you just iron towards the boot blocks, then when you put the rows together, they will nest nicely. So that was something I discovered. And then also, as I was um, making the borders and cutting out the borders, this border, they have used diagonal seams. And after you cut two of them, then you would have, this was right at the end. And so it would have been like a seam right at the corner. So you have enough extra fabric 
when you're cutting because you just need five strips. So there's enough that you can cut this piece out. And then all your seams will be in the middle. Your diagonal seams will be somewhere in the middle where you won't notice them. And here is the backing fabric. Directional horses. So I sew the two together and that'll make a nice backing and then tomorrow I will layer, quilt, and bind as desired. Although everybody hates binding, so nobody desires binding. I don't know why they say that. But it's all put together. It's a beautiful horse lover, cowboy boot lover, urban cowboy hanger on that can't get over the fact that it's not a thing anymore but still wants to live on. Or even just a horse blanket for your horse if you love your horse. So that's what it looks like. You can get all the information you need to know about the pattern and the fabrics. It's also the fabrics available at Country Crossroads in Jacksonville, Florida. So if you're heading to the beach, you can stop and pick up the fabric. And oh, by the way, like the shirt, it's our Esme fabric from Ink and Arrow for QT Fabrics. So you might want to look that up if you like this. And thanks for watching.